I've spent my whole life surfing competitively and following a tour schedule. I was lucky enough to see a lot of the world, but I didn't get to dive deep into different cultures until now. Now that I'm not on tour, I've decided to make my own, and I'm the only one on it. Time is not about competing. It's about exploring, finding new ways, meeting inspiring women, experiencing different ways of life, and making my own rules as I go. the land of extremes. With 1.4 billion people, it's the most populous country on earth. The cities are big, and the sites are unlike anywhere else in the world. Uncensored forms of Western culture have trickled into the country despite strict sanctions against exactly that. Surfing was one of these notions that slowly diffused into the country and continues to gain popularity on the country's southern coast. Because yes, China does indeed have surf. To understand more about the growing Chinese surf culture, we decided to come straight to the source. After a brief stop to meet some innovative creatives in Shenzhen, we'll be headed south to the island of Hainan. There, we'll meet with Monica Guo, one of China's best female surfers. With her, we'll cruise the island, meet the locals, and enjoy everything the South China Sea has to offer. It was only a generation ago that Shenzhen was a delta of sleepy fishing villages. However, in the 1980s, China designated the area as the country's first special economic zone, transforming it into a manufacturing powerhouse, not to mention China's wealthiest city, all within a few decades. Broccoli bun. <laughs> Yummy. What is wrong with the baby? <laughs> Next up in the city was an afternoon with Yo-Yo Zong, a free-spirited tattoo artist who is also, coincidentally, one of China's top freedivers. She, she's working on... Working on Yo-Yo is one of the most talented female tattoo artists in China and travels the world doing competitions and expos. <laughs> so basically, I couldn't miss the opportunity to get a tattoo from her. When did you realize you wanted to be a tattoo artist and open the studio? So I first learned the Chinese brush paintings and I went to the studio to learn, you know, we call like Western art, yeah. <laughs> Western art, yeah. some kind of that. And then I start to get more and more interesting tattoo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that time I also got my first tattoo and then I've been really attracted by tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like it's really an art piece. It is. But on a human body and can stay forever. Yoya opened her tattoo studio, Lotus Ink Art, in the Oak Bluffs about a decade ago. These days she generally sticks to massive detailed pieces, but she made a little exception for me and my little lightning bolt tattoo. <laughs> Thank you, Yoya. Awesome, I love it. Too fast. <laughs> All right. Now it seems, it seems like now it's yeah, there is just um, yeah, a lot more, you know, Females doing different things around China, like surfing, yeah. skating, yeah. Uh, free diving. Free diving, <laughs> yes. I know you're free diving. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about free diving. So when did you fall in love with free diving? The fight was six years ago. Free diving start to get popular all around the world, and especially start to we all we start to have the knowledge about free diving in China. Then I knew it, and then I went to the course, and then passed very fast. So. Yeah. I, I really want to do my free diving course eventually, yes. so I can be very, very, very good. <laughs> yeah, it is in that very like connected actually free diving mm -hmm. and surfing. After a few packed days in the city, it was off to the coast, where we were headed for Hainan, a large island just to the southeast of the mainland. Hainan is often described as the Hawaii of China, and the description isn't far off. Sanya, our arrival city in the south, is flanked by white sand beaches and towering skyscrapers, not unlike Waikiki. But we weren't there to hang in the city, not entirely anyway. From the airport, we headed to the small village of Hohai, home to seafood, surf clubs, and most importantly, Monica Guo, one of China's best female longboarders. Monica's family thought she was crazy. When at 21, she announced she was leaving their village in the mountains of mainland China, 
to move to Hainan and become a surfer girl. Like why, why did you, what drew, like drew you to surfing? Did you see something that when you decided that you wanted to learn or was it just something that? Yeah, I, wa I was watching the Blue Crash. Wow. Yeah, the first one. Blue Crash. I know, I love it. I love I it so love much. It. So I was thinking, what kind of sport, because I played basketball for a long time, yeah, for 14 years. So I was like, what kind of sport can make the girl become like that strong? Yeah. And then, you know, keep in challenge yourself. And also you can take care of your family and it, and chase your dream, something like this. I said, oh, I want to try it. And after I found out you can serve in Hong Kong. So yeah, why not? So amazing. <laughs> how far was your hometown from the beach? Like, oh, my hometown doesn't have a beach. But this how far way. How far away? Like, it's like hours. a one and a half hours flight. flight. Yes. Wow. So you packed up and you started surfing in Hong Kong and then 10 years later you were a professional Chinese surfer traveling around the world doing what you love and in such a short time. Yeah, tell me about your transformation to where you are now. Yeah, I was really lucky. I'm really lucky for the first generation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so my next step is like promotion surfing to the other girls because in China not so many girls surfing because they don't understand. Also, they're not really enjoying the sun. But I want to use my way to spy and then say, if B10 is okay, it's yeah. still looking gorgeous <laughs> and you're healthy. And the surfing, not just surf, surfing, just another lifestyle. Yeah. And also it's like, the sport is like have a soul inside. It so it's pure your heart yeah. and pure your mind and may you become a better person. Yeah. I think this was my nest. I want to tell more people how cool it is. Mm -hmm. A combination of wanderlust and a bit of blue crush sparked something inside of Monica. The decision did not go smoothly at first. Her father warned her her skin would get too dark, that men wouldn't want to marry her, that the ocean was too dangerous. But it's a good thing she didn't listen. I tell my parents and my parents first, like, they don't understand. They don't understand at all. They don't understand what I'm doing. But they see me change, they see me become happy and healthy and the what surfing has done yes. to your life. I teach my dad. Now he and surfs? Then, yes. And he loves it? He loves it. It's he so good. carry the boy and goes surfing. Hi, I'll go surfing now. I was like, cool. Monica has become a major role model for Chinese women and girls who fear the consequences of taking risks like the one that she once did. We are better than we think. We are stronger than we think. Yeah. Yeah. For us, we've learned that challenges are amazing. Yeah, and it is. We love it because we enjoy that. And then when you like, overcome an obstacle or a hurdle, it feels so much better. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think, I think surfing changed our life so much. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. It's so good. <laughs> While in her hometown, Hohai, Monica shared her magical little world with us. Surf around Hainan is notoriously fickle, so we considered ourselves lucky when we scored a few days with some swell. However, the weather itself wasn't exactly cooperating. Stifling hot one minute, then dumping rain the next. Hainan felt as tropical as they come. The rain itself wasn't a problem, but when lightning bolts started hitting the lineup, we decided it was time to wait out the storm with a traditional noodle lunch. My misadventures with chopsticks continued until finally it was deemed safe enough for a surf. In China, we use quasi. We found ourselves a peaky beach break. We were the only ones heading out with boards, though the beach itself was lively with wedding photo shoots and sandy toddlers. Monica and I went wave for wave in a memorable little surf session, chatting, laughing, and a couple little party waves, of course. Monica suggested a stop at a nearby cultural village 
aimed to give visitors insight into some of the customs of Indigenous tribes of Hainan. Thanks to Monica, we didn't need a tour guide, and she explained each area to us, adding in fun facts, like pointing out the fermenting snakes and making sure we tried all the unfamiliar foods. After a near attempt of making fire, we came across a small stage. A traditional dance was about to take place and after watching, Monica convinced me we should try it ourselves. Located about an hour from Sanya, Ho Hai itself is tiny, and while it may appear as another Chinese fishing town, a closer look will tell you that it is in fact an awesome and dedicated surf town. We also discovered it's home to a collection of surf clubs, which are more like multifunctional establishments that often double or triple as restaurants, bars and hotels. Longboards from local shapers filled most club's racks, and friends often took turns on the tiny waves out front. Monica and I went to go get a couple of waves out. It turned out the waves were more suited for her dog, Honey. She's a natural in the water. By the end of our time in China, all expectations had been exceeded. Be it in the tattoo parlour in Shenzhen, or logging in a thunderstorm in Hanan, our time in China felt like one secret door after another being opened. Despite the confusion, the heat, and the often chaotic task of getting from place to place, every moment paid off. It's easy to view China as shrouded in some sort of unknown, and in many ways it is. But this trip, guided by the amazing women, it helped to lift that veil a little, and it's clear that the generations to come have big things planned. Granted, China is massive in every sense of the word. Geographically, culturally, historically. We only brushed the surface on our trip. But even in those few drops, we found worlds that we would happily fall into again and again and again.